Hey guys, happy Wednesday. I hope everybody's doing well out there today. Uh, I thought for this uh, video today, we would do uh, kind of a, another option for something we've already done in the past. Uh, in the past, we installed something called Pi-hole. I think pretty much everybody on this channel is familiar with Pi-hole. Uh, basically, it is a, a network-wide DNS-based ad blocking and malware blocking uh, service that you can install on a, on a Raspberry Pi or even in a Docker container. And uh, we've done that video in the past, but today I wanna take a look at a different service called AdGuard Home. Uh, this uh, works basically the exact same way as Pi-hole does, but the user interface I actually think is a little cleaner in AdGuard Home. So let's jump over to my desktop and see how to get this installed. Okay, so here we are on my desktop and here we can see uh, we're on the AdGuard Home uh, webpage on AdGuard.com. Uh, I will have this linked in the description as well as uh, everything relevant to this video will be linked in a blog post in the description down below. Um, so definitely check this out if you want more information, uh, all kinds of really good stuff uh, on their website. So definitely check that out. Um, so there are a couple of different ways that we can go about setting this up. Uh, you can see that I've got AdGuard Home right here, uh, already set up in a stack, but it's not running. Um, so we'll um, kind of go in here and we'll take a look at the editor. Now, this is uh, a stack that I built based on uh, a bit of uh, code over here. Uh, let's see if I can drag this way out uh, like so. And uh, we're not gonna get it all, but uh, here we can see this is the Docker command uh, for AdGuard Home. And uh, it's just a long command that you can run in an SSH prompt. Um, but of course, we don't like to do that if we don't have to here. So I went ahead and made uh, this stack. Now, originally this stack or this, this snippet, whatever you wanna call it here, I also had ports 80 and 443. I've disabled those or taken those out of the stack uh, since we're not gonna use them. Uh, but we will have ports 53, uh, 67, 68, 853, and 3000 uh, set up here. Now, you can leave all of these, you need to leave all of these as they are, except for port 3000. Uh, that's the port we're gonna use to access the dashboard. So um, again, and then below that, we've got some volumes uh, that you will need to uh, change here to go to uh, where your configuration files are gonna be located for your system. So uh, again, you may wanna change port 3000, you will wanna change the ports, and that's all you should need to change there. So, uh, so all we've gotta do is uh, scroll down, click deploy or update. Uh, we'll give that just a second to run. And then over here, uh, we can see uh, that it's up and running. So let's take a look. And it looks like this here is running. So uh, let's go ahead and go back to our containers. And here you can see, oops, you know what we need to fix this. I actually just learned about this this morning because I am super slow on the uptake here. Uh, I'm gonna say um, panda.local. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do this instead. I'm gonna do a uh, host name. I'm, right now I'm logged into uh, my, my server via SSH, but I'm gonna do host name uh, dash I. Uh, this is 1.30, so I'm going to do 192.168.1.30, and then we'll go ahead and say uh, update the endpoint. And what that's going to do, again, I just learned this this morning, is make it so we can click right there. And now we're actually brought to the setup screen for AdGuard Home. So we'll go ahead and click on Get Started. Uh, right now, uh, it's trying to set up the, uh, the interface on port 80, but we're going to change that to 3000. Uh, everything else here we can leave alone. So we'll go ahead and click Next. Uh, we're gonna enter a username. Uh, this will be our admin account. You can make that username whatever you want it to be. Um, you know what, I'm just gonna make it DB Tech though, just cause. And I'll give it a password and I'll re-enter the password. And then I'll click next. And here it's got some different uh, setup methods for different uh, devices there. So I'll go ahead and click on next again and then open the dashboard. Uh, so now we'll enter our username and uh, we'll enter our password and we'll click sign in. Now, of course, by default, it's not gonna do anything here because uh, we actually need to um, edit uh, our network and internet connection settings. So let's come up to here and we're we'll change our adapter settings. And we'll bring this up and we'll go here. Holy cow, it opens everything in the wrong window. Uh, we'll go to here and we'll change this to be 192.168.1.30. And we'll say okay, and okay, and close, and okay, and close. Now we're here, so now we can click on refresh. Now we're actually getting some DNS queries here. So uh, you could actually set this up on your router. Uh, I've got AdGuard Home set up on my on my actual main system, my main uh, server that I use for everything. Uh, and I've got my router pointed to it and it works really, really well. 
Um, and so just to kind of give you an idea of how this works, uh, let's uh, let's go over here to uh, Social Blade and we'll go to my page here. And uh, normally you would see a ton of ads on this page. They're gonna be down the sides, on both sides, actually across the top. Uh, there's gonna be one here and one here. There's gonna be one across the bottom. Luckily, we're not seeing that. So if we go to refresh, or not refresh, but disable, here we can see it blocked a bunch. So let's come back over here and do a control R. Um, and maybe, maybe it's not gonna do, oh, there they are. There they are. There are all of those ads from Social Blade. Uh, I was actually on Car ID earlier, uh, looking at some parts for, uh, for my car. Uh, so that's uh, what we're seeing there. But if I come back and I uh, click refresh, Holy cow, that's a lot of queries. Let's go ahead and re-enable protection there. And then uh, we'll go ahead and pull a new page or uh, refresh. Gonna have to do this a couple of times for caching reasons, um, but eventually it will uh, stop uh, showing ads here again. Uh, it just needs a few minutes to, uh, to go back to normal there. So in fact, if we refresh again, you can see how many queries we're getting just from uh, Social Blade's website. So. Uh, it's blocking a ton of stuff. It's blocking 30% of, of garbage on just that website, really. Um, it'll also block, of course, uh, malware and phishing. Uh, you can turn on blocking adult websites if you want to do that. You can actually go into settings here, go to general settings, um, and turn on all kinds of safe search and all kinds of stuff that will just block any kind of adult content or whatever you want it to block there. Uh, we can also go into DNS settings. Um, we can declare what we want our upstream DNS to be. Um, you can, uh, of course, change your DNS servers down here. Uh, if we test that, everything should work just fine. Uh, so lots of settings in here. Basically, the default stuff is going to work just fine. Um, you can turn on encryption if you want to do that. Um, there are client settings. There are DHCP settings if you wanted to use this uh, to, uh, to give out uh, IP addresses to the devices on your network. Uh, but what we really want to look at here is uh, under filters for DNS block lists. Uh, by default, you can uh, you can have these block lists either enabled with the check mark or not enabled when it's not checked. We'll go ahead and turn those on. Uh, if we want to add a block list, we can just click add block list, uh, give it a name, give it a URL, and uh, click save. So let's actually do that. If I go to 192, oh, that's, uh, oh, not that far, uh, 255 slash admin, oh, two. Two five because I'm dumb, like so. And then we can go to group management and add lists. Um, and let's just come down and we'll grab this one right here. Um, and we'll give it uh, that URL. Uh, let's clean that up and we'll say OISD is the name of it. And we'll click save. So now we've added a million different URLs uh, to our block list. Um, and if you wanted to uh, do allow lists, you could do that. Uh, DNS custom rewrites, you can do those. So if you wanted to uh, just be able to type in, you know, uh, uh, a local domain name and have it automatically forward, you can do that as well. Um, and you've got custom filtering rules where you can use regex to do all kinds of custom stuff there. So um, query logs, um, you can see everything that's been pulled up, everything that's been blocked, uh, lots and lots of stuff being blocked here. Um, so that looks good. So we're definitely working. Uh, if we come back to our homepage, uh, here you can see 580 DNS requests were made and 328 of them were blocked. Um, and again, I've only visited really one website and it's this one right here. Here you can see that it's actually taking over and actually starting to block some ads and um, mostly cleaned up at this point. So uh, looking better, definitely. So uh, that's pretty much all there is to setting up AdGuard Home. So like I said, all of this will be available uh, in the blog post linked in the description, uh, whether you want to do it through a stack or you want to run it through an SSH command, uh, both of those options will be available in the blog post linked in the description. So you can use either of those methods that you want to use. Um, if you got any questions or comments about any of this, definitely leave that in the, in the comment section down below. Uh, while you're down in that area, looking at stuff, clicking on links, uh, there'll be a couple of links. One is for a coffee. Uh, that's kind of a one-time tip jar. If you find my videos helpful and want to kick me a couple of bucks, if that's feasible for you, uh, there's a coffee link for that. Or if there's uh, 
Uh, if you want to become a patron, there are a few different levels at which you can subscribe. Uh, two of those levels at the moment will give you access to a uh, patrons only Discord server. I'm actually thinking about adding uh, early access uh, for, a, for a different fee. I th I'm thinking about doing like for $3 a month, you get early access to all of my videos. Uh, definitely let me know in the comment section down below uh, what your thoughts are on doing something like that. If you'd like to have early access, that would be kind of cool. Uh, so if you're interested in that, let me know in the comments. That will help me make my decision as as well. Um, but I think that pretty much wraps up everything I wanted to cover in this video. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up here. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support and I'll talk to you in the next video.